best things about running your own radio station is that it gives you the freedom and opportunity to create content that you want to broadcast, regardless of the subject matter or genre you're passionate about. However, this can sometimes be a daunting task because there are limitless possibilities to the types of things that you can discuss. So how do you go about picking the right topics for your radio station's audience? In this video, we're going to show you how to choose the most engaging talk radio topics for your shows, the kind of topics that will keep your listeners tuning in again and again. And not only that, we're going to show you the formula that professional radio stations use to replicate this process. If you use these strategies, you'll be on the right track to consistently producing high quality, engaging content that will help you build your audience and grow your listeners. So firstly, let's look at choosing engaging themes. A lot of radio stations are quite flexible in terms of their structure and the topics they cover. But in general, most have predefined themes or goals so they always stay on point. So for example, let's say you're running a breakfast show which focuses on world news. This is going to appeal to quite a wide audience. Alternatively, if it's a show that runs on local news, this is a more niche audience. So your radio station's shows can be as broad or as specific as you want, as long as you have an overall theme or goal, which in this case is the news. Having overriding themes or goals will give your station's output more coherence. Being a radio station owner, or a station manager is a bit like being a newspaper editor in that you're taking lots of different shows and different voices and shaping that into a consistent output. Now there's an endless amount of topics that you can choose from like news or current events as we've just mentioned or educational topics like history or science, political commentary, sports, music, satire or just something fun that you're interested in. So, for an example, let's take a look at Adam Bates' show from Manchester Live, where his theme throughout is, what do you do on unexpected days off? And uh, it was just, just really disappointing. If you've had a snow day, uh, I want you to let me know. On MCR is live on Twitter, or Ads Bates also on Twitter as well. Uh, I want to find out, I want to know, like, what, what did you do? What did you do with your day off? Have you ever had a day off uh, that you weren't expecting? Uh, that's the question I've been asking all week on social media. Uh, we have some of your, um, you know, some of your stories uh, coming up after this. This is Old School and Urban Cone on MCR Live. Now, as you've just heard, he's picked out a theme in advance, and he's even asked his audience to get involved. This makes it more interactive and fun, and it allows the listeners to find out what other listeners are getting up to. So, let's keep listening. Oh... Oh, I ruined the ending. Oh no, building up to it all that time. Uh, it's Adam here with you on MCR Live, uh, old school. Um, and uh, oh, I can't believe that. You know, you, you, as, a, as a DJ or, or even just presenting on radio, you're not supposed to crash any lyrics. Uh, but if you're building up uh, for, for all of the song, just for that bit, devastated. Uh, my name's Adam, here with you till 11 o'clock uh, when uh, the Vanity Project take over. Uh, so I was talking about snow days and how I was really building up and getting excited for, for a snow day this week. It didn't happen. Uh, so on social media, I was asking about your snow days or your unexpected days off from work and what you got up to. Uh, Jack has been on, on Twitter and she said, We had a snow day a couple of weeks ago because the snow was taller than our heads. Hashtag Atlantic Canada. Oh, yes. Uh, international baby here on MCR Live. Yes, because you can listen online. So you should now really begin to see a pattern forming here. He continues the topic in between tracks to get a flow going. And it's a rather neat way to weave together different points of view and ideas to build an overall theme. Now, the point is, regardless of the subject matter itself, always good to set themes and goals to give your show a direction and connect everything together in a more seamless manner. Now, when it comes to actually picking topics, there's not really a right or wrong answer in terms of what you choose but it's important to always think about whether the topic itself is going to be of interest to your listeners and how much it's going to actually engage them in your show. 
And it's also worth considering how much you know about the said subject and whether you can talk about that in an authoritative manner. And then once you've picked your topic, the next step is to work out ways to build on top of this theme. Now, there really isn't a limit to the topics or themes that you could pick for your station or for your show for that matter, but it is incredibly important to make sure that those topics that are chosen relate to the other types of content that your show is putting out and more generally to the overall tone of your station's output. I kind of like to think of this as being a bit like a jigsaw puzzle. So each piece of content needs to loosely fit together to make up a bigger picture. As I've just mentioned, some of the things that are worth considering when you pick a topic are your own knowledge of this subject. Ultimately, the more you know about a subject and the more you understand it, the more you'll be able to command your audience's attention. And then also how much demand there is from your audience. Because if you're picking topics that your audience aren't going to be able to relate to easily or that don't fit the context of your show, then you're really doing your station's output a disservice. You know, in radio, it's all about the audience. It's about thinking who your audience is and then creating great content for that audience. And then lastly, the other point I would make is that if you're making your shows available to download once they've been broadcast, you need to think about whether the subject itself will have longevity. Now, these kind of subjects that have more longevity are what we like to call evergreen topics. And if you are making a show available for download post-broadcast, then it really is worth thinking about subjects that are going to have more longevity because they're going to stay more relevant and they can continue drawing in listeners over time whilst still being highly engaging during the actual broadcast. And in fact, one of the easiest ways to ensure the topics you cover are going to keep bringing in listeners again and again is to invite guests and experts onto your shows and then create loose themes around their area of expertise. Ultimately, any guests or experts you bring in are going to have something to say. You know, and if they're really good at what they do, that kind of content is going to consistently bring in listeners over time. You know, and then alternatively, if we look at something like a breaking news segment, although that's going to be highly engaging during your actual broadcast, it's not really going to have much shelf life once it's gone out. Having a fresh perspective on things can really shake up your shows. You know, that's why guests are a great way of encouraging discussion and debate amongst your listeners. Now, in the UK, we have broadcasters and stations like BBC Radio that are really great at doing this. Whereas in the US, there's also some really interesting stations like WNYC who are consistently getting new people on board to freshen up their shows. Whether you're doing an interview with a guest or maybe it's a more of an informal chat or you're encouraging listeners to phone in, other points of view always provide interesting avenues of conversation. And as a broadcaster, as a DJ, you know, that makes your job much easier because what you're essentially doing is creating that output. So you're essentially presenting a loose topic and then you're getting your guests or your listeners to respond. And this actually makes your job a lot easier because all you really have to do is follow up with questions and keep directing the conversation. You know, it's like the old adage is that people love to talk about themselves and you can essentially give your listeners and your guests a platform to do that and they're creating the content for you. Now, one of the best ways to pick topics that will resonate with your audience is to look at current events. So you can do this by checking newspaper headlines, looking at trending topics on Google or even just looking at social media. Now, one of the tricks that I really like, and it's a really easy way to find topics that will have a real cut through and reach the widest possible audience, is to use Google News Alerts. So these are notifications that you can set up and it alerts you when certain keywords are being used in news articles or in blog posts. And a lot of this stuff is like kind of what's hot, what's happening, what are people really talking about now on the internet? So these are perfect subjects for you to then piggyback off You know, and a lot of these subjects are things that are really hot topics on the internet. It's things that people are really talking about and getting passionate and fired up about. So they're perfect things for you to then pick up and piggyback off that audience. 
you know, and then alternatively, you can follow, you know, whichever news outlets that you're interested in or that your audience are interested in on things like Twitter and Facebook. So as I was saying before, you know, regardless of whatever trending topics it is that you choose, just make sure that they're relevant for your audience. You know, they really do need to be on point for your shows. So, for example, let's say you're a rock station. Well, if you're talking about the latest J-pop hits, then that's not really going to get much cut through with your listeners. But you can think about what, what are the breaking, trending stories that are really happening around the rock music industry at the moment. Or, for example, let's say you're talking about breaking political events. Well, that's not really going to fit in between different pop tracks that you're playing because, you know, that's just going to feel out of character. Whereas interjecting the latest celebrity news in between the hits that you're playing, that might work. So, you know, it's always just about identifying what it is that your audience cares about, looking for what it is that's really happening out there and merging those two things together. And the internet is the most powerful tool for doing this. Everything is at your fingertips. But, you know, as I mentioned before, it's incredibly important that you do filter out irrelevant stuff. So stuff that doesn't add to your show or stuff that doesn't fit the format or just things that your audience aren't really going to care about. It's not always about what it is that you want to talk about. You need to talk about what it is you think your audience wants to talk about. And to do that, it really comes down to understanding your niche. So according to radio industry experts, single subject or niche radio shows and stations are often some of the most popular online. Now, that kind of thinking can be applied to pretty much any industry. So your potential listeners could be sports fans who are passionate about a certain team or people who lean towards a particular political persuasion. Now, whilst I do appreciate that politics and religion can be taboo, they're also subjects that can potentially draw in huge audiences. Now, we're not saying that your show or your station needs to be geared exclusively to that topic, but ultimately, covering subjects that are controversial will attract listeners. However, it is also important not to go to extremes that are going to alienate other potential listeners. So, what you really need to do is find ways to air all sides of an argument. And as we mentioned earlier, using guests is actually one really good way of doing this because you can get your guests to express their opinion and then you can act as the devil's advocate and, you know, reflect the opposite opinion. And then your listeners, who may sit on either side of that, can then phone in and give their opinion. And ultimately, if you can attract listeners with opposing views, whether it's sports, politics or any subject that your listeners are actually passionate about, it's going to increase your audience in the long run. Because what you're essentially doing is you're attracting both sides of that argument to your station and you're getting double the audience. So to use the sport analogy again, do you want fans of one team or another team or do you want fans of both of those teams arguing on your station? That, that's what you're looking for. You know, and that kind of scenario is going to get listeners fired up and passionate. And that's what you want. And it is going to have a dramatic impact on your listener numbers if you do that. I mean, in my personal opinion, there's no point in just focusing on one side of the argument exclusively and then just talking about with people that also care about that in a silo. You want to incorporate other opinions, opposing opinions, because that's where dynamic, interesting conversations come from. And if you get this right, not only are they going to be talking about it on your station, they're going to go out to their social media networks and talk about it with their followers. And then that's going to bring in more listeners. And then essentially, you're creating this sort of 360 approach to your content and output. And like I said before, your listeners and your guests are actually doing the hard work for you. And then what you're doing is just directing all of this and shaping where you want the narrative and the conversation to go. And that's one of the key skills to being a great broadcaster. And ultimately, this approach will help you reach the widest possible audience whilst attracting very niche but very passionate audiences. So you may have noticed throughout this presentation, I've been trying to really reiterate thinking about what it is your listeners care about because ultimately your listeners are your lifeblood. And the best performing topics for your radio station will come from understanding your listener base and creating topics and themes around the things that they care about. You know, so if you've ever been in a conversation with someone 
who's discussing a topic that you're not really interested in, well, you just immediately disengage and you switch off and you stop paying attention. And it's definitely true that listeners will do the same thing. I mean, really, you're asking your listeners to give up their time to listen to you. So why would they do that unless they really care about what it is you have to say? And by knowing who your listeners are, kind of inside out, you can create and broadcast really interesting content that's going to resonate with them really well. And at the end of the day, that's going to allow you to create a deeper, longer lasting bond with your listener. And if you do create, you know, highly engaging content, then that's going to make your shows more compelling. And it's going to want your listeners to join into that conversation, you know, and this makes your listeners feel closer to you. And ultimately, it keeps them coming back again and again. And as a broadcaster, that's what you want. You don't want someone to just tune in once, think, "Mm, this isn't for me, and tune out again. So when it comes to picking topics and thinking about what kind of content it is you should be creating for your station, knowing your listeners inside out is the easiest way to guarantee the topics you pick are going to be right for your listeners and that they're going to be something that they can relate to. So how do you really get to know these listeners? Well, there's a few different tools and tricks that you can use, and I'm going to take you through some of them now. So first of all, look at your analytics, whether that's Google Analytics on your website or analytics in your actual radio station. So on radio.co, for example, we have built-in analytics that show you important things like your listener's location, the devices that they've used to connect, whether that's a desktop, a mobile phone, whether they've connected via something like Sonos, and it'll also tell you what times of day people are tuning in. Now, this is incredibly useful in the long run because you're going to get to know what your listeners' habits are, and then you can see what's working and what's not, and then you can refine what you're doing based on that information. So if people are tuning in to your shows in the morning, then they're probably listening on the way to work. So you can focus your efforts on that part of the day and begin to create content and different topics around that. So going back to that original example we used from the Manchester Live Breakfast Show, which could be something just as simple as asking your listeners to call in and tell you about their worst commuting examples. And if you field and screen these people before you put them live on air, then you're going to be able to pick out the funniest and most relevant stories. And then secondly, the other thing you can do in terms of analytics is obviously look at your website. So you can find out an awful lot of information about your listeners, such as where they're coming from, what they've searched for to find you, and what the most popular pages are within your actual website. Google Analytics is an incredibly valuable tool because firstly, it's free, And it tells you pretty much everything you need to know about how people are using your website. And you can then use this information about your listeners' habits and turn that into your content strategy. And then you can use this information to determine what topics and subjects you should be covering for your audience. Now, if you're not quite sure where to start with some of this stuff, it doesn't hurt to just actually speak to your listeners and just ask them questions. So you can use things like SurveyMonkey or Typeform and get feedback from your listeners about your shows. So you can ask them, you know, what is it that you liked most about the show or is there anything that can be improved? And then from that, you can begin to build up a picture about what's working for you and what's not. You know, and whilst this might seem quite simple on the surface of it, there's nothing really wrong with that. You know, you don't always need to have overcomplicated processes for working this stuff out. And there's there's nothing wrong with just actually asking listeners what they want to hear. I mean, that's why DJs often ask listeners to call in with their music requests after all. You know, and when it comes to communicating with your audience about this stuff and understanding what topics you should be covering... As I mentioned earlier, social media is one of the best ways to do this. So it's really important to be able to get your head around how you can harness social media to improve your output and keep it really on trend. And it may seem obvious, but social media is where people are talking about this stuff. And whether it's Twitter, Facebook or Facebook groups, it's a place for you to go and do your research, you know, and understand what it is that people are talking about around the themes and goals that relate to your station's output. 
Now, again, like with all of this stuff, obviously you do need to make sure you're filtering out stuff that's irrelevant because there's a lot of stuff out there, obviously. But if you want to get, you know, a good understanding of what it is that your listeners are talking about, what it is that they care about and that they're discussing online, then social media is the place to do that. And by doing your research like this, you'll have such a good understanding of what it is that a potential listener really wants to hear. And in turn, that's going to allow you to create an incredibly passionate audience for your station. So what I want to cover in this final slide is how to take all of these topics and then deliver them in a way that's going to be coherent. And one of the greatest ways to do this is to use the radio show clock format. So once you've assembled all of your topics for your show, it's a good idea to plan them so the flow of your show works. Now, a radio show clock is not really that complicated. It's essentially a pie chart with all of the elements of your show mapped out over the course of the hour or however long your show actually is. So you can see we've got a show clock here. Now it has a mix of music, presenter talk, interview and an intro and an outro to bookend the start and the end of the show. By organising your topics using a radio show clock, you can give your content a good fluid structure that helps you to sound more professional. Now obviously different presenters all have different presenting styles and you can use the radio show clock format as strictly or as loosely as you like. So some people like to prepare well in advance and know exactly what they're going to say and when they're going to say it. And other presenters and DJs prefer to be a bit more fluid and, you know, and prefer to improvise as they're going along and react off and bounce off different things that are actually happening in the moment. But by using a radio show clock to plan your content, it means you're never going to veer too far from what your ultimate goal is for that show. You know, and regardless of the style of the presenter or the show itself, Radio Show Clock is a great way to discipline your output and make sure that the content and topics you're covering are engaging for your listeners. So hopefully this has given you some food for thought and some good starting points on your journey to creating some awesome radio shows. Let us know in the comments below how these strategies have worked out for you. And if you haven't already started your radio station, then head to try.radio.co today and begin broadcasting your station.